Hello, my name is Paul Liu. Today's presentation, Agile and Functional Safety, Next Frontier, was inspired by a desire to apply Agile methods to functional safety. Today's agenda is consists of four points. What is functional safety? What do you expect uh, from FUSA Agile teams? I will also present a FUSA optimization, optimization case study that uses Scrum. And I'll conclude using a few words of wisdom for the FUSA Agile practitioner. I would like to start with a cartoon from my friend Mark Virtus. As you can see, the traditional way of, uh, of considering safety is the waterfall model. It's a tried and true method. And we went to the moon using that method. It has high reliability. It successfully delivered safety. Unfortunately, it's associated with high costs and long schedule delays. Yeah, can we go to Mars using Agile? I'm not sure if uh, Mark Vertis um, is a criticism or reality, but this topic is worth exploring. What is Automotive FUSA? This refers to the ISO 26262 standard. The ISO CCC 26262 standard is derived from IEC 61508, applies to road vehicles, addresses functional safety of automotive, electrical, and electronics systems, provides a framework for safety-related system based on many technologies, example, uh, mechanical, hydraulic, and pneumatic found in ve on vehicles, Includes function-oriented and quality-oriented activities and work products as part of safety management. ISO 26262 is typically deployed with a software capability maturing model such as CMMI or Automotive Spice. Software development um, is defined as a V-cycle in 26262. It starts with system requirements decomposed to software requirements, software design, unit coding, unit testing, integration and integration testing, embedded software, and system verification. Let's examine software development using uh, Scrum, for example. An ideal planning should typically include sprints uh, in and consists of usually cross-functional scrum teams or about eight people each and synchronized streams sprints uh, feature development flows from one team to the other each product owner and fuse activities follow a sliced delivery model as you can see whenever a, a piece of uh, our feature goes from system requirements, design, integration, and VNV. This is how you get sliced F1, F2, F3, F4, and F5 in time. Um, contingency planning should typically include aborted incomplete sprints. Typically, incomplete sprints, when they are incomplete sprints, for example, in this case, the design was and coding was not completed, then there is a delay of one sprint. So delays tend to propagate to the validation phase. However, Whenever there are software requirements, software safety requirements missed, for example, in this case, when there is a software design problem identified, 
or whenever there's a data interface, data control mismatch, there are quality related uh, necessary change such as MISRA, uh, missing software requirements, or other sy system assumption restrictions and requirements. If in the optimistic case, the sprints, the critical path features can put in the next sprint slice, for instance, in this case, uh, if you have F1 being the, um, the uh, missed requirements, it need to be repeated. Sprints that are completed are not affected. The impact is felt if the initial backlog is empty. And churn and the optimistic method, churn can limit it to only one sprint slice. However, a more realistic viewpoint of a sprint would be whenever there are miss or change software requirements, safety architecture change, item definition change, item here being defined as system or combination of systems that implements a function at vehicle level. Typically, the changes uh, in system configuration that could not be adjusted by, by configuration parameters or systems thought to be independent are found to be to have dependencies. Whenever such cases happen, more, uh, most of the dependent uh, uh, sprints now are typically aborted or we need to be incomplete because those have a rippling effect. Unfortunately, the expected burn down uh, chart uh, uh, for the sprints tend to be quite different from the planned, actual from the plan. To limit costs and schedule overruns, early identification of unknown is essential. Uh, accurate requirement has a very heavy impact on schedule and schedule pressure is not dictated by, dictated by features only. Uh, verification and validation key to prove that safety goals have been met. We must find a better way to ensure that uh, the actual gets closer to planned. Now let's look at the case study. For this case study, I will attempt to make the case for increasing FUSA agility using a powertrain application. This powertrain application was an innovative, an innovative algorithm that was never tested and the calibration very sensitive to system components and safety limits also had yet to be determined for the goal of optimizing the application for fuel efficiency and safety. In this particular example, there is a coprocessor and it is interfacing with a micro auto box simulating an ECU, driving actuators and receiving signals from traces from actual engines. The development process on the coprocessor needed to be done whenever algorithms are updated. Changes in interfaces between coprocessor and EC required driver changes and validation. As you can see from the algorithm, changes in the interfaces required model and loop testing or the cogeneration, update of the COM interface, testing integration of the D space and the coprocessor. Uh, hill bench, integrate that in the hill bench, run automated test, and pass fail criteria. If the, uh, the algorithm pass, it would, the algorithm would be validated, otherwise it fail. The whole turnaround time for this activity map was about two days. Now, attempting to find shortcuts right now, we identified that the driver porting efforts and the validation 
was not value added activity. Since a plant model was available, a virtual ECU model could be deployed. Doing so would reduce the efforts completely. Implementing the shortcuts did not replace existing workflow, but the virtual ECU flow allowed a more expedient and effective scan. Once a ma mapping had been done, complete hill flow on more promising configuration will be done prior to testing on the vehicle. This also allowed refining, refining on the plant model. Eventually, it reduced the validation cycle from two days to two hours. Engine operation point, operating points mapped were mapped very quickly. The net result of this uh, experiment was that the initial spike was to determine the reduced scope, determine the scope, reduce the risk, prevented wasted work, and validated requirements and assumptions. Additional bonus was we were able to create reusable infrastructure and the whole process was automated easily and this made for faster future execution. This example shows that agile methods are effective when requirements are known. Simulation allows quick prototyping of the, of the system to, to help development once a system is understood and requirements are firmed up, then the full safety work can start. Safety work can use sprints, scale agile, or even iterative waterfall once reasonably validated requirements exist. This will result in less churn over the life of the project. And now let's look at a few words of wisdom for the FUSA agile practitioner. The FUSA Agile Practitioner has a very high impact on the Scrum teams. Organizationally, team roles may not exist. The practitioner must have a keen eye to figure out who and what is missing. In terms of safety requirements, you need to spend upfront effort in order to figure those out. For increased team effectiveness, the practitioner must ensure that the teams, if the teams become too big because of specialization, they need to be reorganized. In terms of skills, you can see that in, a, in addition to CI, CD best practices, KPI, velocity measures, efficiency, but not safety a combination of safety versus uh, velocity efficiency is important. Team reorganization. This encourages team members to get out of their comfort zone and ask many why questions. Bottlenecks. Activity mapping is a tool to determine what activities bring the best results. In terms of aptitude, fail fast and frequently. Retrospective are important to determine high risk areas and correction applied between sprints. We need the practitioner leverages other resources. Don't build when it can be when whenever something can be bought. Never short change safety. On the next FUSA Agile, FUSA Agile presentation, I'll be using the NVIDIA Drive Constellation, where we'll be just demonstrating the Autonomous Vehicle Validation System. Thank you very much for your attention and your time.